With me now to ponder that significance, uh, some of those early Roger picks, including my friend Brian Kilmeade. We've got David Asman, and last but not least, Ainsley Earhart. Uh, welcome to all of you. We're going to be reading other statements that have come out uh, since his sad passing. Um, I think you were remembering a lot of the message he would have for you, right? And explain that. Well, when I came in to interview, I remember it was my birthday weekend. It was 2006 in September. And I was so excited because Roger was giving me a chance for all my dreams to come true. And that was to move to New York and be at the national level. So I came into Fox and I met with some of the executives. And I wasn't sure if I was getting the job. You know, you either have the feeling or you don't. I didn't really, wasn't convinced. I had a meeting with Roger and I walked into the office and he asked only questions about me. Who are my leaders? Who do I look up to? Wanted to know about me and my family. I wanted to say, Roger, and I think I did, I'm meeting with a legend. I want to know about you. Can you just teach me? I might, you might not hire me, but can you just tell me more about yourself and what you advice for me? But he wanted to know about me. And that's what they say about great leaders, that they'll just direct the conversation at the other person. So you walk out and you feel like you were loved. And he just had that effect on me. Every time I met with him, he wanted to hear about me. He really cared about um, what was going on with my family. I remember when I was pregnant, I got promoted. I was worried about taking off so much time, four months. Tell me to try that. And it really <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it didn't work. I got a note and everything. Uh, but Roger you know, said, my, you're a little girl, Ainsley. I want you to know we'll always be a part of the Fox family. I will always take care of your family. You know, and, guys, we always see things through the prism of the controversies last year. So much we didn't know then. As I say, we don't know now. But how do you look back, Brian? Um, I always thought he was Bill Parcells in a business suit. He always pictured himself a blue-collar guy. And he said, you know, when I write my biography, I'm going to be on the cover uh, with a lunchbox. He legitimately had a lunchbox in Ohio that he flipped open, almost like we used to see in those 1950s movies. That's how he always envisioned himself for the little guy. And I always thought that book I, he read, and he, he didn't believe it, but I actually read before I got here, You Are the Message, right. for better or for worse. And you're the perfect example of this, is that you are, if you don't like Neil Cavuto on television, you're not going to like him in, in real life. And you are the message. So for better or for worse, be yourself on air, and I'll back you. And he did, because I don't know if you Google me, I made a few mistakes. <laughs> and uh, I don't want you to do that, David. Uh, but I always thought that, that was the, the one thing that stood clear is that I always thought to myself, how is he going to handle it if we become number one? He's used to being the underdog. Sure enough, we became number one, and he, pr he pushed us in a way. He said, nobody believes this. They don't believe we can stay here. The world's still against us, and that still motivated right. people. Right? Yeah, he had a different view. I mean, we might look at it now. It would seem almost silly to go back in time and think, well, what would be such a big thing about espousing the virtues of capitalism, right. that rich guys aren't all evil, that prayer is okay. But back then, that was a pretty weird thing. Well, to that point, I mean, he said the, his opening line to people who came here from outside, I don't know if he gave it to you two, was, look, you're taking on a status quo. You're not, nobody's going to like you. If you want to be liked, go somewhere else. Or, and he, this is in Roger's sense of humor, he had kind of a dark sense of humor. So he said, if you want to be liked, die. Because when you're dead, <laughs> even your worst enemy is going to say nice things about you. And by the way, sure enough, this morning, some of our competitive channels were saying fulsome praise. I couldn't praise believe it. I couldn't for believe it. Yeah. But again, the idea that you don't go into journalism, you don't st start a television network with the idea of being liked by everybody and getting awards. You start it because we started this because we want to take on the status quo. We think there's something wrong with this. That we're going to, we're going to, as the old phrase, speak truth to power. And that power, the status quo that controls most of the media in the world uh, is from a uh, different perspective. We're going to be fair and balanced. We're going to present both sides. That's not done elsewhere. I got to say something personal, though, because Ainsley brought this to mind, is that uh, my wife had a stroke about 13 years ago, and I heard from you and I heard from Roger immediately after she had a stroke. And she sa he said, David, who do you work for? I said, I work for you, Roger. He said, okay, I tell you what to do, right? You stay in London, because she had it in, in, in Britain. You stay in London until your wife is well enough to come home. If that's a, a month, a year, mm -hmm. two years, you stay there. And it, it, that attitude wasn't just towards on-air talent. I had camera people tell me the same thing, technicians. He had this ability to, to make sure that he would focus on people's uh, problems and help them if he could. And that's something that, particularly in light of what 
what's happened over the past year been totally overlooked. So many well, dozens you did that and with dozens everybody. of people. I used to think it was just me who did it for. It. How about Fuzia's story? We all know Fuzia, the makeup artist That's here. That's right. a great she story. She was cleaning. She was in the cleaning service here at Fox, and we all know the story. Yes, she she was emptying his trash, and she looked so beautiful. And he said, "Your makeup is so pretty, Fuzia." And she said, "Oh, I really want to be a makeup artist." And he said, "You do?" He said, "Sit down and talk to me." And they talked for a little while. He said, "I'm going to send you to the best makeup school in New York. I'm going to change your life." And now she makes a really good salary. But you she know, has it was, children. It was seeing diamonds in the rough, male, female, those who came from great schools, those who didn't, those who came from very promising markets, those who didn't. But he would see great potential, you know. And mm -hmm. what you were saying, Ron, touched me because I remember um, the, the idea that a lot of Fox personalities, people find this hard to believe, like you guys are exactly the same way off the air that you are on. Yeah, for and better or for worse. For better yeah. or worse. Yeah. We yeah. joke about that, but there is something to be said, Abby, because we've been at places where, you know, it's time yeah. for me to do the news, you know? Right. It's like, whoa. Right. But so he, would, didn't, he didn't like that. But that little thing you did is pretty much mocking the way I deliver the news. So that <laughs> no, really hurts that feeling. Like, I was doing uh, doozy. Uh, you were doing doozy. Yeah, 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 that's true. He's not natural <laughs> like that. He's no, no, no. totally different. No, but uh, in the big picture, he gave a lot of us great opportunities. Even like you look at Bill O'Reilly, who became this megastar. He wasn't when he got here. Not at all. Right? Man. Sean Hannity talked this morning. Yeah. He's, a, he's a mega, one of the most successful people in all the media. He's like, nobody even knew who he was right. coming out a short time ago. People just think because it's been 20 years, it's always been that way. So it's easy to take a star and put him on your team, but it's not easy to make a star and allow him to play his yeah. way. He found something way. in everybody. Uh, the way you looked at business, the way you looked at life, your sense of humor, I remember distinctly, he would always talk about that. But he <laughs> has a great quick wit. You know, His wife, by the way, is out with a statement, Elizabeth Ailes. I am profoundly sad and heartbroken to report that my husband, Roger Ailes, passed away this morning, surrounded by his beautiful family. Roger was my best friend, the most wonderful, loving husband and father to our son, Zachary. He was a loyal friend to so many. Uh, Roger was a patriot, grateful to live in a country that gave him so much opportunity uh, to work hard, to uh, work, uh, well, also to give rise and give back uh, during a career that stretched over more than five decades. His work in entertainment and politics and the news affected the lives of many millions. Uh, he was devoted to them uh, through, throughout all the stuff. And so you'd always think with all the controversies that have developed since that, well, if any, if it was all true, that would not be the case. You know, he lived by one rule, and this is something else I think that bled through the camera there into people's homes. He was so positive. Even when bad things happened in his own life or in, in the country's life, he was so positive. Yeah, he, he dealt with a say, lot of illnesses. He used to say famously, everything. negative people make positive people sick. Mm -hmm. He'd say that over and over and over again. If you I would see say a negative I was people sick of run. hearing that. You know, <laughs> Remember when, right. when we saw started the network, when he started the network, he put the sign up because CNN, um, the, I'm dr drawing a blank, the, Ted, Turner. Ted, Turner Ted Turner said, I, we're going to squash you like a bug, right, Fox News. Right. And he put it up in a big poster well, board. That. It was down in the newsroom. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. Rupert Murdoch, our ultimate boss, put out a statement. Everybody at Fox News is shocked and grieved by the death of Roger Ailes, a brilliant broadcaster. Roger played a huge role in shaping America's media over the last 30 years. He'll be remembered by the many people on both sides of the camera that he discovered, nurtured, and promoted. Roger and I shared a big idea, which he executed in a way no one else could have. In addition, Roger was a great patriot who never ceased fighting for his beliefs. A 21st century Fox, he will always be enormously grateful for the great business he built. Our thoughts and prayers are with his wife, Elizabeth, and his son. Can I just say one thing about the business angle of this thing? When they started, I mean, nobody, not many people gave them a chance. I mean, that's when MSNBC started. Oh, Some sure. other networks were starting back then. I was working, I was working for the Wall Street Journal, but I was also moonlighting, working for John Malone, who had a little TV show. John Malone is a great business leader. Uh, he canceled, John Malone canceled the show when he heard about Fox News being started because he said, those two guys, Rupert Murdoch and Roger Ailes, are going to be unbeatable. You have the best deal maker in the world, Rupert Murdoch, and the best manager in the world, Roger Rails. And between the two of them, they're going to knock out the competition. And again, it was it was several years before that happened, but, but visionaries like John Malone could see that it was going to happen. You know, a lot of people said, wow, wait a second. They keep saying he's a genius. Where, how, what do you mean by that? It's, it's the simplicity in which he delivered things. The most complex situations, he would put a statement summarizing those situations in a way that makes you thought, why didn't I think that? Right. Why haven't I been thinking it that way? It seems to me if we're doing this, if they're doing this, that's really not 
where, where the countries should be heading. Why aren't we not bringing these questions? Why are the lawmakers not being asked these types of topics? And you leave saying, I'm an idiot. Why didn't I think of that? It's, right. You took a complex situation and could knock it down to two or three sentences. You know, many of you talk about the mainstream media, it's an overworn phrase, I grant you. But you'd think that they would imitate that success, right? But if Roger would famously say it wasn't in their DNA to do that because they didn't believe in it. So they'd sooner go out of business, he would say, than, than, than make some adjustments or pivot to what was the vast majority of, of, of people in this country. They tried, and, and they, they boiled it down into their narrow frame of reference, which was, okay, there are more conservatives on Fox, therefore, if we put more conservatives on our network, uh, we'll be as successful as they are. They tried that format, and they didn't get it, because what you were talking about, what we were all talking about, is how we're just who we are on camera. That came through. It was, it was the notion, the Roger notion, that you had to be you on camera. But many would say, will like, through it we're, it's always bias on the right, but if you're biased on the left, no one cites that. You know that. what's sad? What's so sad about That's this true. whole story is that Roger influenced so many people. Thousands of people are here in this building. That's right. He did all of this for all of us. He provided a college for my daughter. I will forever be grateful. I am sad to see the controversy that the both of you have mentioned because Sean Hannity in his statement said, all have fallen short, all have sinned, cast the first stone. We all know these, these scriptures. And Alex Alec Baldwin wrote on Twitter, Alec Baldwin wrote this, don't dance on Ailes's grave. He has children. All men come to the same end. We are forgiven and you can hate the sin, but you can love the sinner. Wow. And you have to remember that he was an individual. He was human. He had his vices and they came, you know, they got the best of him. We all do. Right. And people but, got hurt but, and we know that and they might be watching. We understand that. We're not minimizing that. anything. But we will say we're this. Not. There's a reason why when you walk the halls in 17 and 18, we get along. He picked the right type of people. I'm just listening to this. You know, we're not all the same. Obviously, I'm, I'm a lot uh, nicer Weird. and better looking than everybody else here. <laughs> but bes bes and besides that, more humble. yeah, and, and yeah. more humble. Just I don't display it often, right? Exactly. Uh, because there really is no holes in me. But but for the most part, we get along. I mean, very how would, what else, other group can put together a David Asman, Il Cabuto, and Geraldo Rivera? Yeah. And still get worse. Well, that's and then why somehow I didn't Ainsley puts up with it. Right, <laughs> guys. I want to thank you all. I know it's very tough on a day like this, but. Thank you. We should get the good out there because it's, it, it's out there. Um, and I will never forget he and his wife providing opportunities for me because only in America, as my dad used to say, can I be on TV giving financial advice? Is this a great country or what? Roger Ailes, gone way too soon at 77.